Well, the bill passed by the House funds the troops for the rest of the fiscal year until September. Failure to pass it in the Senate tonight means that our troops could miss some payments despite putting their lives on the line for our freedom. A disabled veteran had a question about all this for Democratic Congressman Jim Moran of Virginia at a town hall. Listen to this unbelievable exchange. I'm a 27-year veteran, disabled veteran. And on behalf of all the active duty deployed troops, let me ask the first question, and that is, why are you here tonight and not in Congress trying to figure out how to stop this from happening? And yet here we are in the 11th hour, okay, and the troops are not going to get paid. They're, they're only going to get paid for through the 8th, okay? And there are troops that are barely making enough money who have their spouses deployed, and that's going to cause an extreme hardship. So I don't understand why every person in Congress is not in Congress tonight. I don't understand how you can stand up there and try to justify that this thing may actually go longer because Congress is on vacation. That is absurd. Where was Congress last weekend? Why is everything now in the 11th hour? And I have not heard one thing from you or from any congressman on, let's say the government does shut down. Now what are you going to do to get it going again? And if you think people are disturbed about it shutting down, wait to hear how disturbed they are waiting to find out when it goes back on. There's not much point to my standing in an empty chamber, though, through the evening, is there? It seems to me there is a point to making myself available for people who want to make caustic comments as well as people who have legitimate questions to ask as to what might happen if there is a government shutdown. I this take is the exception to calling oh, my fine. comments Now possible. I'm talking, and you can sit down when I, you finish. I really do take exception I'm to sure that. you do. Because yeah. I, I didn't say anything caustic. All right. Can you explain why the troops are not going to get paid? All right. Yes. I can tell you how they will get paid. Sit down. Sir, Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. you had an opportunity to speak. Now it's time to sit well, down. Well, I take exception to you calling my comments caustic. Sit down, please. You know, or you can leave. If you don't want to listen to the question, I suspect it was a rhetorical question. So uh, you made your point, and now you can leave unless you want to sit down and listen. Wow. So was that a proper way to answer a question about the budget from a disabled veteran? Dr. Coomer is still with us, also Peter Schiff, and we are joined by Mark Yost. He's a Wall Street Journal leisure and arts writer and a Navy veteran. Mark, what did you think of that? I thought that that exchange, David, was a microcosm of the problem with political dialogue in this country. Uh, Moran was wrong for the way he answered. The guy was wrong for interrupting him. He got, Moran let him ask his question. It was a rather long question. These two guys are never going to see eye to eye. And that's where the country's at, David. That's the problem in Washington. That's when what... Moran characterized this guy essentially as a nut and then said, you know, I don't, I don't need to answer a rhetorical question. It wasn't a rhetorical question. It was a very specific one. Well, but, David, the, the point was that... I agree with you. Moran was wrong. Moran was wrong the way he answered the question. He should have been more polite. I have a problem with the way some of the congressional people treat their constituents. They think their constituents are more uh, the people who donate to their campaigns than anyone else. But I, as the one veteran here, I'm going to say that, okay, the guy asked his question and Moran was answering it, and he should have been, shouldn't have interrupted. And Moran, we know, is not going to give a straight answer. Moran didn't answer. I mean, that's the point. He didn't give a straight He, he moved on very quickly. He characterized the guy as, as kind of on a fringe and then, and then moved on. Let me, let me just let Dr. Coomer in. Go ahead. I, when are we going to say to our politicians, you are a public servant, right? I mean, we are paying your, t your salaries, and you have to answer our questions. And if we happen to ask them a little bit irritated, like this gentleman did, which I, I, quite frankly, I understand, and quite frankly, I want to know an answer to this question. Why aren't the soldiers going to get paid? Well, Congress will still get paid if they go take their leave at 
take their leave out. So you know what? I, uh, this, this is unacceptable. It's unacceptable for a politician just to lash out at their constituents when they're asking a question, and maybe they don't ask the question appropriately, but there are other people there that can take, that can, you know, calm them down. He deserved an answer. He should have been, he should have been given an answer, and th the politicians need to start realizing that they're the public servants, not us. Well, that's a good, Peter, what about that point? The fact that there is this kind of holier now feeling by these politicians. Well, I, I think they regard themselves as some type of nobility. Uh, you know, f living off the, 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 the productivity of, uh, of, uh, of the serfs and, you know, here in, 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 uh, in the real world. You know, they're in their, their bubbles in Washington. You know, I, I don't think we should pay uh, the congressmen and the senators if the government shuts down. In fact, I think we should strip them of their retirement benefits and their health care benefits, even if they don't shut it down, because I don't think that they deserve it. And I think I think they're overpaid. I think they shouldn't be paid anything if there isn't a balanced budget. I don't want to go into debt to pay their salaries. I don't want to go into debt to give them retirement benefits and health care. So if they can't balance the books, then the first people who should suffer should be the politicians that voted for the deficits. By the way, Mark, didn't that guy have a, that veteran have a, a fair comment that you guys should not be on break. You should not be taking a vacation uh, while while these issues that affect millions of people in the United States uh, could be critical this weekend. Oh, absolutely. But you know how it is, David. Um, Congress basically works Tuesday to Thursday and the rest of the time, the weekend, they're home back in their district, raising money, um, uh, doing these types of town hall meetings. My point was that let's not get lost in, in, in what the topic was and what the subject matter was. <laughs> This exchange was a microcosm for ex all the exchanges going on across this country between left and right, middle and right, middle and left. See, and I disagree. You're, you're saying that they were talking above each other. They weren't talking directly to each other. I saw an attempt on the part of the veteran to get a straight answer from the guy, but, but then he was characterized as being on a fringe. Uh, well, and I'm saying, I'm not defending Moran. Yeah. I'm saying that if you look at that exchange and listen to both of them and realize that they're never, that's the problem. That's why we're at this 11th hour is because these two guys are never going to see eye to eye. These guys are never going to reach any kind of a compromise. All right, but again, today we heard Harry Reid on the floor of the Senate. We played the clip a couple of times. We don't have to play it again, but he was, he was saying that the Republican argument concerning Planned Parenthood funding was that my daughter and my granddaughter are going to die as a result of Planned Parenthood not getting the funding uh, that Democrats think Planned Parenthood. I mean, with that, yeah. what kind of argument, what kind of a debate topic is that? But, and this is why Americans are frustrated. We're tired of politicking. It's what Senator Reid was doing in that argument, saying that cancer screening, every cancer screening is, is going to be out of the picture if they get rid of Title X. I, I do like Title X for the purposes of the fact that, for the reasons that they do uh, provide preventative med medical care. But let's not grandstand. Let's not politicize the issue to the point but, that we're, we, we can't make sense to the American people but, and we can't pass a budget. Go but, ahead, but Peter. For all, this for all this rhetoric, far more Americans are going to suffer. And, you know, probably more of them will die if we keep this deficit spending going, because we're going to have an economic crisis, there could be civil unrest. I mean, th this is going to be very problematic. You know, it's not a question of a temporary reduction. There's going to be no Social Security checks. There's going to be no Medicare checks for anybody because the money's not going to buy anything. It doesn't matter if you have a check, but the check doesn't buy anything. And that's where we're headed in just a few short years if we do not make much more serious cuts right now than the ones that the Republicans are, oppose, uh, are proposing. And the Democrats have got to get on board with it because yeah. there's going to be a lot more questions like the one we heard from this gentleman well, that our again, politicians Peter, are afraid Peter, to this answer. is the beginning. This is the beginning. And I still think the momentum now is for cutting and I think that is a good thing. It's not enough. We Everybody can't do it agrees slow. it's not enough. We've got to go a lot further, but at least the momentum has started. We've got to leave it at that panel. Thank you very much. Coming up on deck from Capitol Hill to your living room, we're going to be scoring the